All right. So the wrath of God is being indeed being revealed. Uh, here we are back to the da ba ba right from heaven against every impiety and wickedness. There are a lot of ways that that gets translated. Ungodliness and unjustness uh, is one. There, there are several ways that these two words uh, get translated. Of those who suppress the truth by their wickedness, or however you can translate that word. For what can be known about God, and here's the indictment, what can be known about God is evident to them because God made them, excuse me, God made it evident to them. What can be known about God is evident to them because God made it evident to them. Ever since the creation of the world, our minds should go to Romans 1, or Romans 1, Genesis 1, in the beginning, right? Ever since the creation of the world, God's invisible attributes of eternal power and divinity have been able to be understood and perceived in what God has made. What's Paul saying? He's saying creation is evidence enough, not only that there is a God, but about part of God's character, eternal power, divine nature. Those should be, and the, the Greek word is very, uh, has clarity in it, have been able to be understood. Another translation is clearly seen through what God has made. So for Paul, creation itself is evidence enough, not only that there is a God, but that we can know some things about that God. Right? As a result, they, that is all of these people who are sort of wrath receivers, they are without excuse, have no excuse. For although they knew God, they did not accord him glory as God or give him thanks. Instead, they became vain in their reasoning and their senseless minds were darkened. So if the, if the question coming in was, who needs to be saved and why? What is this salvation bit about? We get to that question pretty quickly. For Paul, there is a chasm between where humanity was made to be and where humanity is. And that makes God angry. Now, uh, many people I, I talk to about God and anger immediately go to, I, you know, I, <laughs> that angry God of the Old Testament, that's not the God I worship, or that's not the God I picture. But here we've got a New Testament passage, which, by the way, joins Jesus being angry in the synagogue in Pernum at, at the Pharisees when they're uh, hypocritical, um, Jesus being angry in the temple when people are being locked out by the price gouging. We, we've got places other than this in Revelation 17 and 18, uh, the whole Roman imperial uh, structure is thrown in the lake of fire. We've got places in the New Testament that are quite angry looks at God, right? Angry looking God. Here, that God shows up most directly. It is the orge theu are the first two Greek words. The anger of God, right? The wrath of God is indeed being revealed from heaven against every impiety and wickedness of those who suppress the truth by their wickedness. So who are those who suppress the truth by their wickedness? They're these people who should have known God. They should have looked at creation and come to the obvious conclusion God made this, and by the way, as I look around, I can figure out some things about God, but they suppress that truth and therefore have no excuse. Notice the third person, they. Does Paul not count himself one of these? It seems that he's talking about the Gentile world, right? This is an anthropology of Gentile religion, and we're going to get back to this uh, as we go through, but it could simply be all humanity, right? What we are, we're going to get back to distinction between the Jews and the Greek. It could be Gentile world or it could be all humanity. We're going to let that unfold as we go. What we know is that because of this suppression, the last part of this uh, passage, because of this suppression of the truth, they became vain in their reasoning and their senseless minds were darkened. 
something happened in the human beings who did not move from God made this to there is a God and I know a bit about what God looks like. 